Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another awesome tutorial. So let's get cracking. Friends, a user asked for a catapult, so let's start by changing the name to catapult. And let me show you how I'd build it with the new SimLab connectors. So, first, we need something for this catapult to spin around. I am going to use this cylinder, but I'm going to hold shift. Take it down to size five, stretch it quite long. And of course, let's look at it from a corner and rotate it 90 degrees. Notice if we stay inside the circle, 22 and a half degrees at a time, real easy to get that arranged. I'm gonna lift it up in the air a bit because the catapult needs room to get launched. And let's go get the awesome connectors we can play with the only way to find them at the moment is by entering SimLab and then dragging them out. We've got the Epic Axle. We'll use that in a minute. We have also got the Sweet Slider and finally the Perfect Pivot. When you've got your parts, you can back out and let's put them to use. First one we're going to use is the Axle. I'm going to do Control D. Let's nudge that one away. Hit C for cruising and I want to cruise this out on the end of this shape. That is the axle our lever is going to spin around. Of course, if we're going to make a lever, we're going to do that with a rectangle. Bring out a cube. Let's squish it so it's thin. Stretch it so it's long. Let's select those two pieces. Do L for a line. Note I do not have the axle. I just have this cylinder. Of course, I want middle. I want middle. And I want middle. Because I was already at an angle, that was pretty easy to line up. To make this so that it is a catapult, I'm going to tip it a little bit this way. That way it's going to launch in that direction. Next up, let's add a way to hold our projectile. I'm going to do it with the awesome Hasphere. If we bring this out and use the sweet mirror tool, bingo! It is aimed the right way. If we do Control D, we have got two of them. If we lift that up or we do Control up, you take your pick of which you prefer. Make the second one a hole. Shift click and do Control G. We have got a little cup that can hold a projectile. I'm going to nudge this out to the very end and I am not going to connect it. Instead, I'm going to use the pivot. Once again, Control D so I don't lose my connector. And then we're going to do C to cruise that connector right up here for this shape. I am going to connect one to the pink piece. I'm going to connect one to the orange piece. And then on the connector, I don't want it to move at all. So I'm setting it as zero. Our next step is to add a projectile. I'm going to set it inside the cup. I'm going to hold shift to squeeze it down. Pick a fun color just because, doggone it, I like picking colors. Let's go yellow. And then we need something to launch this. Easy peasy. Cruise this out in place. I'm going to put the work plane back on the ground. And what that does is it lets me lift our projectile straight up. So we have just built a cool little catapult. Let's take it to the sim lab and give it a test. I am going to start by clicking on this pivot point and I want it to be static. I want to click on the sphere right here and I want to make this a different material. Plastic is light. I want steel because I want this thing to come down, hit this really hard and launch the yellow piece. And I'm going to make the yellow piece bouncy rubber. Let's hit play and see how it all works. Bingo! We have got a launcher. If we hit pause, you can back this up and you can see how that was balanced reasonably well. This stayed exactly where the pivot had it and it launches our projectile right where we wanted. Now, right now I'm going to hit reset. Let's back up and add a little bit of fun to our project. The first thing I'm going to do is make the world larger. Let's hit settings. Let's backspace. Instead of 200, we are going to do 500. And then I'm going to close the settings. I am going to bring out a cube. Let's make it gray so it looks more like a wall. 
I'm going to set my nudge to the 5 millimeter nudge. Let me show you why. If we do control D and do 1, 2, 3, 4 nudges, 5 times 4 is 20. So if we do control D again and again and again, it goes exactly the way we want. If we grab all of those and do control D and then control up arrow, 1, 2, 3, 4, it builds a wall. If we do control D again and again and again, it gets as tall as we want. And I want to make sure this does not move till the ball hits it. Check this out. I'm going to simply cruise a little cube out on top. I'm going to hold down shift to make it super small. And then because it is cruised to that shape, I can come out here, pick a different color, and I'm going to lock that. I'm going to just go with white. And now, friends, if I go back into SimLab, I'm going to take this little piece and I'm going to make it static. So that way our launcher cannot move past that. And this time, when I hit play, it stays in place till the ball hits. And bingo, we have launched at our wall <laughs> and the actual steel ball is what knocks it over let's go back and modify our launcher i've got an idea that might be pretty darn helpful i'm going to click on this pink piece and i'm going to use the rotation handle to curve it so that it's better for the launch i can nudge it a couple clicks notice i do have that five millimeter nudge on if i want to do a finer tune i can switch that I'm going to do a couple control ups and rotate it just a couple more degrees. And let's see what we get from this configuration. Once again, SimLab, here we come. And of course, it's time to hit play. Bingo! <laughs> it makes impact, but it doesn't do any dent with the wood. Let's hit pause, reset it. Let's see what happens if we switch to a concrete ball. Once again, material, concrete, a little bit more dense. Let's hit play. We made a little bit more impact, but not as much as the steel was. Once again, pause, reset. Let's do one more modification. Let's take the wall and let's change it to polystyrene. This is part of the fun is you can keep messing with the materials to get the exact reaction that you'd like. Polystyrene in place. If we look up here at the ball, I accidentally turned it into styrofoam tube. I'm gonna switch it to steel. Let's double check our projectile. Did I mix it as well? Nope, it is concrete, but I'm gonna switch it to steel. Let's see if large steel can throw small steel. Once again, when we hit play, impact, throw, and wall destroyed. How cool is that? As far as a challenge, friends, I do want you to experiment with which end of this lever is longer. If you have a smaller edge out here where it's hit by the large projectile, how does that affect your normal project? Another cool thing is if you stagger your bricks instead of building them straight up, which is the least strong way, you can build a wall. Of course, friends, I hope you have a ton of fun building launchers and have a glorious day and keep tinkering. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. I have got a page dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing categories. Down below, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. Below that, friends, you'll also find the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. If you look at the very top, you'll also find the link to the Tinkercad community discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, of course, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.